All right, guys. BLM here back with more. Um, you know, replicant. Uh, we're gonna get to you on here, obviously. Uh, we're doing ending B. Uh, this is gonna be fucking boring because we're just gonna be redoing the same shit. But um, I think I'm gonna listen to a podcast or something along the way because it's like her and Sydney fuck that. So I'm listening to Co Wrong. And her and Aubrey uh, go off to actually, you know what? have a reward together. And uh, first off, I'll talk to you things first. So tonight, um, kind of went according to plan. I did finish editing my Jeff Probst least favorite player video. I uh, did a bit of the prep for the near replicant review. Essentially, I outlined the structure that I want to follow. And then I made a thumbnail. So, I mean, there's that. And then I uh, also got a start to my Death Stranding retrospective. Um, which was, what, the first uh, first few minutes. I, I did the intro, and then... Uh, like, the intro's done, both video and audio. And then I did edit the audio of the uh, initial section of the video, which, where I talk about... Um, the game essentially not being a uh, a uh, walking simulator. So yeah, um, so the plan tomorrow, uh, I do work tomorrow, but I should have some time to work on some stuff in the morning. Uh, so I'll probably go ahead and uh, get more edit. I was gonna write the near video. I was actually thinking about writing the near video now. Um, I did decide against it. Um, though, I don't know. I might just fucking do it. We'll see. Um, what I think I might, what I think I'll do is I think I'll finish editing the, uh, Death Str So I'll continue, tomorrow I'll continue along with Death Stranding. Um, which I won't finish tomorrow, but I'd like to get more of it done. Then if I can fin- like, and then I'll probably finish on Sunday. Um, but after that, uh, if I have time, I'll start writing the near video instead of going right into the Revelations retrospective. I think that's probably what I'll do. And see how much I can get there. If I got most of it done, I'll probably just start off uh, Monday by wrapping it up. Because either way, I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna be able to finish the Revelations retrospective in one night anyway, so it's like it doesn't really matter that much. So I think that's probably what I'll do. Sam, where'd they go? Um. Get him! Don't let him escape! really iconic to um, see those three particular women together because I feel like that they end up being like such great time. representations I, I of really to, the though. three uh, um, tribes for this season and then the three different uh, uh, styles of play I, I between Sydney, yeah, Michelle, yeah, and Aubrey and uh, you know it's, it's really great to see them probably the three best players in the game also uh, you know enjoying that reward together and then to see her come out of that reward where both Sydney and Aubrey like yes Michelle Michelle, we have to like you know, like ties out. Michelle's in. We gotta you know uh, get get Michelle into it. And she just did that uh, so easily. It was just so impressive to uh, watch what she did. And I wonder if the difference between mm -hmm. Michelle here in Korong and Michelle in Winners of War. I think she plays the middle here perfectly. And I think that in Winners at War, I think she's playing from the bottom in Winners at War. And I think that might not be any fault of times. hers. I think it's a fault of that mm. nobody was able to be able to uh, be match wits with Tony enough. Uh, where that there was not enough of a rival for Tony for Michelle to be able to play the middle. The other thing that I forgot We'll save about... that for Winners at War. <laughs> um, the, the other thing that I forgot about until I rewatched is that they, uh, I don't know why everyone was so surprised that, that Michelle could possibly win the game when the players still in the game in that late, late part of the game recognized that Michelle was a threat to win. Like she was going to be voted out at four. That was supposed to be the plan and she won immunity. And like, they, they literally say that like, 
well, that screws up our plan. That was who we had to take out at this point. So if the, if the three other players in the game are recognizing that she's a threat to win, they're saying she's the only person left in the game that hasn't pissed off this jury, this highly emotional jury. Um, so so why is it a shock? Like they they literally say this is this was the person we had to take out at four. Now they've just won immunity. Another thing to throw on the resume, like. Why are we Why are we shocked about this? I just and I'm I'm asking myself this question as well because I was a part of the, you know the the audience that was kind of like not quite expecting it when it happened. I don't get how. About it, but just not Again, like it was so it. fucking so obvious Michelle was winning from Magic standpoint. Things, um, <laughs> like I don't get how so many people were so surprised by it. There were things that people were saying about her game as well. Like they did recognize her as a threat. Like, yeah, I literally uh, called the episode one uh, a fucking go back like, and watch. Um, we have uh, so many different things uh, to uh, get into. Uh, just let's look a couple of twists from Survivor Go Wrong. Mm -hmm. They do a lot here with the idols. Uh, that you have an idol, but you could also use your regular idol as a super idol, where you could combine two idols to make a idol that you could play uh, the god idol that you could play after the votes are read. Uh, it does not get used. Uh, it is uh, famously uh, does not get used uh, when Scott gets voted out. I thought this brought a lot of intrigue to the season. But yeah, why did they never do this again? You know what? I'm not sure because I do think that it was a very fun story to follow when Scott, of all people, is the one who realizes, ooh, if I, I'm befriending Ty, I'm going to convince him not to use his idol. Let's pocket it. Let's keep it. If I bring him and Jason together, I have this formation. And then the three of them work together long enough that you really thought it was going to be used. So when it doesn't get used, that shoe drops. It was a lot of intrigue to go. Obviously, it's it's not um like they did something similar um, where it wasn't the god idol, but wasn't it there a two piece idol um, during the extinction, right? They have done in other seasons where that, okay, the, the, I, the, you get half an idol, and then the idol only works with here. the yeah, other half. I don't know how much but we this can actually was use. that you have an idol. But then if you, uh, oh, wow. like, uh, one plus Check one equals off. three, if you, uh, you know, put the two idols together, yeah, it is more right? powerful this than a regular idol. The great part about this is that not, no idols are being played whatsoever. Not only did the super yeah, idols not cool end up getting, though. um, you know, utilized. Because obviously it's like completely right. recontextualized the entire narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that it, it served its purpose, but the, the singular idols didn't even, there was literally no idol play in the season, which I think is quite interesting. Mm-hmm, yeah. I wonder huh? if production huh? felt like, okay, this was okay, but... Like, uh, we need people playing idols. We uh, we don't need people, like, uh, holding on to all these Jacob. idols. Uh, like, uh, we're putting these idols out there. Happening. We want to see them get Jacob. played. Don't be saving them for a rainy day, people. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I oh. ultimately like this, but I do think the reason it doesn't come back, Rob, is because it's going to make people want to hold out in case they can find no. the connection. Whereas, like, now we see a lot more, like, oh, there's a shot clock on this one. You can use it here and only here. To like, so it can and has to be used. But I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of having it be like this because it's more in control of the players and what they want to do and if they're going to use it, if they're not going to use it. It's all about that gambling the idol to enjoy. So yeah. this brought me so much joy, and I hope to see it come back at some point. Jenny, one of the other big twists that we get, and I think this was by necessity because uh, we end up with uh, the, the final three on day 37, where we get to see a challenge to. Vote somebody off the jury. Uh, ultimately, I think this is a good moment for Michelle when she votes off Neil, who uh, was re definitely going to drag her at the final tribal council. So uh, that she does a, a great job of picking the right person. Would you like to see vote a member out of the jury on any, any of the seasons? No. You know, I, I didn't hate it. I, I remembered that it happened. They Obviously, I knew that it, this. this happened, but I kind of forgot about the whole... Um, lead up to it that it was really fun to have them, you know, go back oh, yeah. and be like, okay, You're so what's little, tomorrow? There's you? another challenge. What's You're happening right? here? Yeah. And How even the jury we'll coming in for that, um, for that tribal council where they were like, years. okay, so we're we doing a final two. Oh wait, there's no one wearing a necklace. Oh, like, I thought it was a really fun, uh, okay. fun moment. And 
I mean, I might something. feel differently what is it? if, you, you know, it rumors about happens again and, and it takes out someone on the jury that I am, no, I like, I don't want to be taken like off the jury or I feel I personally really bad for. But, All I want is to oh my god, this was delicious on the rewatch. I, I was, I was living for it because... Holy crap! Wait, was, yes. <laughs> I, I did not got enjoy my hands on a weapon. little I thought beach you might on the way out. Like, you came to this game thinking you were a bad bitch. And I, like, I Don't forgot worry. how cringeworthy this yeah. moment was. And I around. was just, like, <laughs> pumping my fist for Michelle, being like, Yes, you get his ass out of here. Yeah. Like, yeah. you need to finish his quote. So dumb. I mean, there's potential. The, 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 you're a little pump suckling on the right teeth now. still. And it's just, like, you, like it was the anything. worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And where did Neil get off? That, uh, he was so arrogant all through the whole season. Um, <laughs> so I, I thought the, the wildest Neil moment for me I'm was when he's getting medically boy. evacuated from the game. Only and he starts telling Jeff Probst, he's like, uh, level you half know, Jeff, so you and I have both changed yourself. a lot over these last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, don't, what don't, don't compare your journey to Jeff's with Survivor. Also, here's the passcode Neil was very high on his own supply. Use it on the elevator. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. In a, in Where did you go? I got taken out. He's like, well, you all got lucky got today. Yeah. It's like, well, you weren't, you weren't going... Your, your your ally was gonna go and I'm you just screwed the her by uh, hopping way, into that boat with that idol you in with? your pocket. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just felt like he was very very smug. Um, and I Come. the way he like slinked up to Michelle, the whole thing was very uncomfortable for yeah. me. Like, why did he walk by her like that? And like like the way his voice went low and like he like sl like Wait. dramatically slinked this past one? her and like Jeff was, he was like super I pissed. Yeah, well... I think that maybe he thought he wasn't allowed to say anything. He's like, I still gotta get my shot at <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I whisper it to her. His, yeah. yeah. He wanted his tribal moment right then and there. And it really felt like he didn't know if he was gonna be allowed to say kind of just vomited it out and then left. And it didn't hit. It didn't It was awkward. I didn't like it. I was like, get yeah. out of here. It was yeah. very uncomfortable. I think it, it gained some sympathy from me. I don't think anybody's vote got changed, but I think the people were like, ah, okay. And, uh, good job, Michelle. You, you nailed that. Yeah. No, another thing you did right. It wasn't like, like if he would have said, what? Are you an idiot? I was going to vote for you. I think that she would have looked worse. I think that yeah. Yeah, like, he kind of helped her out. Uh, and Jeff literally said, like, oh, it sounds like you maybe made the right decision. Like, he, he's like putting the words in, in the mouth and saying, like, you may have not heard what Neil just said to Michelle, but I'm making it known she just made the right decision. Yeah. Um, one other thing I want to say at the top of the show before we start going through all of it is that Scott and Jason, and, and this is probably going to be a hot take. I think they added more to the season yeah, than sure. they took away from it in that I think a lot of the action in this season and a lot of the drama comes from my them. way of them being the antagonists who have a fall on the season. At no point are you rooting for them, but they are just like cartoonishly villainous uh, with there. each other and then have a mighty, mighty fall in the game. I mean, in the words of BB Cans, uh, Pop and Paul Jackson, somebody's got to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, I mean, there, there is no point where you're rooting for them. But I totally agree that they serve such an important purpose in in this story, and it's it's hard to imagine um, how this all comes together if if they're not playing their part as, you know, like, and even when they're when they're underdogs, like when they kind of, when Jason becomes an underdog, like you're sure. still not even rooting for yeah. him, but he, he, he's an important foil there where, um, he, like it's still very, and a very important part of the story. It's like, you gotta finish the job. You gotta, you gotta make sure, oh, well, like the question of you keep him in because no one's going to vote for him. And he, like, just their presence, you know, causes a lot of strategic conversation about whether this is someone that you want to keep around um, and, and start getting rid of, you know, some of these people that actually have good relationships with people in the game, or, you know... I forgot that at the just, time like, I was so convinced that... Uh, and get rid of them. This yeah. is like a constant conversation during the whole merge portion of the game. And you know, and looking back at the last too. five years, Puya, that uh, I don't think there is any other contestant, let alone two, 
who openly embraced the role of being the villain on Survivor. And I've even said many times that Survivor basically cast every season. It's uh, not heroes versus villains, heroes versus heroes. Uh, we don't, well, they, they, they go out of their way. They, they don't like putting people who are going to play the villain on the show. And maybe uh, outside of Bradley in Ghost Island, uh, I'm struggling to even come up with something like, well, what about Chris Noble? Chris Noble like didn't think he was the villain. Chris Noble thought he was the hero. Uh, like, I don't think there's anybody else that you can come up with who was like embracing the role of the villain here uh, from this point forward. No, I mean, ultimately, you know, this is two fully grown men and right out the gate, go after the defenseless receiver that is Alicia. Right out the gate. Yeah. Um, until until she's gone. Then they come into this merge scenario. Jason literally has a confessional where he talks about being the jocks that are shoving the geeks into the lockers. Mm-hmm. So he's fully like, yep, yeah, this is us, and, and we're wearing it like, you know, that's how we are. But then when the story flips on its head, it gets very funny because they somehow end up being going from being like the... Like the like you know the, the 90s high school bully to like the whining babies that didn't mm-hmm. get their way were like I'm gonna put out the fire now and I'm just mad and then they lose each other it's like their storyline is fun I mean now obviously first of all being years removed from it um, second of all knowing that everyone's living their lives like fine everything's okay watching it again it's like yeah they definitely did add to the season by being the villains there, especially it's, it's very tasty knowing they won't get their way at the end, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that's the big takeaway for me is that if, if this season ended with, with Scott winning, Scott Potter being the winner, he's like, oh, a little bit of a, a little hard to take. But it was very funny to watch these two. Really, again, mm-hmm. Neil wins the award for being the highest on his own supply, but these two were an easy second and third on the podium. They genuinely yeah. were like, we're psychologically manipulated them, the warfare is working, and it really it wasn't, wasn't working. they were just doing the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and they also make each other worse. Yes. Like, like there were points, I, I, like, I remembered how terrible they were, I remembered, you know, the way they treated people, and how uncomfortable it made me, um, but I, I understood their place in, in the storyline, and I remember, like, going through this rewatch, I was like, oh yeah, like, okay, I remember that, okay, maybe it was Jason that was really the bad one, because, like, you see Scott in his, like, you know, relationship with Pi on the Swap Tribe, and then Julia comes in, and, like, the three of them are just, like, trying to, like, you know, make their way against the brains, and then I'm like, you know what, maybe he's not so bad, and then it's like, they get back together, together and I'm like, oh, okay, no, actually, he's just the worst, and they bring out the worst in each other, it's like, that that, you know, person that's, like, separated from their best friend and they're not mm-hmm. acting up in front of them because they're trying to, like, they're literally just, like, teenage boys trying to, like, impress their buddy in front of, like, yeah. some girls or something like that. Like, it was so, it was so, like, they're caricatures. Like, they're not yeah. real people. I, but, I had moments where I'm like, this is not real. This is yeah. Like, I will say, though, they did give them both, uh, you know, Scott a little bit less yeah. than Jason. Uh, certainly, uh, Jason uh, got to talk a lot about his daughter, who is autistic, and then Scott talked about uh, his family and his upbringing uh, throughout the season. So it, while it was mostly one note in terms of uh, how villainous they were, they did even, you know, humanize them to a degree uh, as well, which in a season where that they do try to do it, I think, a very good job of, like, being even and, and like, well-rounded with everybody. Even they get something. They tried to make me me feel something. Yeah. I, like, I was taken on a ride with it where I was, like, you know, I, ca- I caught myself being, like, you know what? Like, maybe it was a bad day. And then I was, like, and then the next day something else happens. I'm, like, no, I'm back. I'm back yeah. mad at them again. And could I tie it back to Michelle where I think that one of the things that I think that where Michelle gets lost in the edit, I wonder... Because that the story of the season is so much that Scott and Jason are the are the evildoers. They are the villains of the season. They are the antagonists. Michelle was kind of with them, uh, and so that I wonder if they had to hide as part of like, hey, we want our winner to be likable. We don't want anybody to think Michelle is part of this. Like Michelle was had a pretty good. Really, she wasn't part of it, but she had a pretty good relationship uh, with those guys. She calls out some of their bad behavior when they're acting like babies around the camp. But Michelle, during the game and after the game, um, the, I, I think that she was on pretty good terms with those guys, and it's really, you know. 
uh, the Aubreys and, you know, uh, even Joe and Debbie and ultimately Ty who ends up turning on them. Michelle doesn't really have a moment in the season where she turns on Scott and Jason. No, and, and it, it, we really, you know, get it presented that, that Julia's the turncoat who's, you know, trying trying to, you know, play with, with Scott and Jason and also stick with this other alliance. Um, but like, like I was saying earlier, like, like Michelle was on the periphery. Like, she was yeah. okay with them. She was never going to be targeted by them. She was really in the middle and, and just kind of, like, good with them by proxy of, like, Julia How pretty much. Um and so, yeah, if you're painting this story as, like, good versus evil, evil or, like, antagonist versus protagonist, um, then that's, that's not Michelle's role in here. She, so, so yeah, it is easy to get lost in that. But, I, I you know, I'm, I'm jumping ahead to the final tribal council again, but I thought it was interesting, you know, going in knowing that um, she had a good relationship with, like, the Scots and Jasons, um, but neither of them really championed for her like it was you know what i mean like i i kind of forgot that like it wasn't even like they were stumping for her or anything like that it was just it was a weird haters. situation where yeah. you, the whole season you didn't really have a sense of what her relationship was with them yeah i think that um so for me it's again it's more of a testament to how well she understood the cast she had right because it's very clear from early on if you do jason and scott wrong they will like literally just focus it on you go after you be against everything you represent and you stand for, right okay. and i think that everyone else kind of gets caught doing this except for michelle right michelle gets to sit there not take any of the heat scott does say, the one thing scott does say in the final tribal is you two stopped playing or your game got worse and Michelle, your game just got better. And I think that these two boys subscribe to the, uh, well, if you get rid of me, you better, like, sure as hell be better for your game and you better play the best game ever. And it just happens to work narratively that her game does get louder and more present and more developed in the later part of the game. Whereas in the beginning, she kind of is slow in the development, but then she's doing, you know, she's doing the social work that ends up reaping benefits later. Uh, because she was like Robin's, right? Like she, there are scenes where it's clear that, you know, the, what do they call it? The, uh, the, the, I mean, it was the beauty and the brawn, right? They were all like, yeah. teaming up to go against the, the brain. So that was definitely, she was part of that mix, but ultimately she just subtly was able to maneuver and be on both sides. Like remember Sydney cross, like just leaves it. Oh shit. And they get mad at Sydney. I didn't do that. Michelle never gets any of that go wrong. Yeah. Well, especially because, like, why does her game need to be loud earlier on in the merge when she's... Yeah, she doesn't need to here, do man. anything. She's directly benefiting yeah. from two sides going after each other. She's chilling. Like, that's what you need to be doing. She didn't go to a tribal council in the pre-merge. Yeah. Well, exactly. So. But even in the early part of the merge, like, she's she's not doing... Like, she doesn't have to be making moves. She doesn't need to be playing loud because she is literally in the middle and she's not on the top of either end of the alliances in terms of their picking order. So all she really needs Alarms to do is be vessel. quiet and be kind of good with and everyone. And then Over bodies of like, water. she's good. So... The, you know, Scott's criticism of like your game, your game got louder. It's like, well, of course it did. Like that's that's how you have to play that game. You have taught me much. All right, we're gonna be uh, right back. Missions both order inch about the, the all birds. Tr perfect. The tree runner is carbon parrot. All they go back to the well very quick after it works well once, and I feel like that second time around uh, does not as iconic. Uh, brains versus brawn versus beauty and i think that this is the season where they really just start kind of phoning it in where you know you have people that uh some are like well they're they have inner beauty uh like you didn't have that the the first time through uh alicia she's on the brawn tribe because she doesn't take any guff from anybody you know um it was like that they just sort of really shoehorned this one in there. Really yeah, that, uh, Brains vs. Broad vs. Beauty 2 hits different, right? Yeah, the theme is not a... For me, it wasn't a prevalent part of the story at all. Like, I know it was brought up here and there. Oh, we're Brain, therefore this. We're Brawn, therefore this. I think so... 
in the, in the sequel, it doesn't work for him quite as well as it did in Cognion, where even though at the end, I, in my head, the, those elements did matter. And I think the other testament I would give, the other thing that gives me that reasoning is that with Michelle, with Aubrey, like, they're both the most prominent uh, players at the end of this, like, they're the most notable ones, and they kind of blurred the lines of all That's three by just some of the stuff way they found. played the game, where Michelle has some of the brain aspects, right? Uh, right Aubrey has some of the brawn aspect, Aubrey has some of the beauty aspect, I Michelle has some of the They blurred all the lines which worked, and then from a casting perspective, there was also a little bit of like a, eh, hey, you'll take it. Like, yeah. it was kind of like, well, where you, where you just gonna accept? That's fine. This is gonna take Jenny, a little uh, more the upcoming time season of Australian Survivor is gonna be, uh, Brains be versus Brawn. We've, uh, completely taken the beauty out of the equation. Do you think, is that an improvement is on the formula? We have? Well, I mean, beauty is in the eye of the I guess so, so I, I think the maybe it's just, you know, you, know, you can find beauty on, on either of those, uh, Let's just do this um, one real quick. I mean, this one's really we, we quick. We talked about so. this already, and it is one of the best um, things that Michelle says in the Final Tribal Council. She makes an excellent point where it's like, it's, I mean, if you want to play under the radar and be underestimated, showing up on the Beauty Tribe is great for your game, um, but it does, you know, lead you to have to really prove yourself in these other aspects because you're, you're walking in being typecasted as, like, you know, a uh, one-dimensional, uh, like, just you're based on your looks. And, um, and I really think that it was such a poignant, like, point that she made that it, she she had to show that she had these qualities as opposed to the other people where, the, you know, they were, they were coming in and these things were already known or assumed about them. Um, so I, I think so many of the these uh, casting choices were sh super sh shoehorned, and so okay, I kind okay, of okay. think that it's not the worst thing to get. Rid I'm 100 percent sure they cast first um, and then create the I, I theme don't, afterwards. I don't even know if I love uh, the theme at all. Like I don't even know if we need to do brains versus brawn. Um, like I mean, I guess it's not it's, it's not the worst thing, uh, but I I think no matter what, you know, if you're gonna, especially in a tribe yeah. um, format, like. If you're, if all of the brains are like not physically fit, like you're, you're entering them mm -hmm. to the slaughter. So I think that no matter yeah. what, it's going to be kind of like a mix anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think ultimately the themes like this, these themes are great for promotional material at the start. And then like the first three weeks where they're part of the storyline before everyone has these rivalries oh, and storylines that have developed that they can continue yeah. the thread with after. Really like they're great for that, then they're gone. Because ultimately, I think if you look at oh, you look at the raindrop oh, in this season, well, there's a couple physical specimens there. The look at the front tree. side, there's a couple mines Legendary there. If you look at the beauty side, there's a couple of there's like a you know a hybrid of all three. So it, it kind of just ends up being more of a cosmetic thing at the start of a season than it doesn't matter. Really like supposed to go near yeah. Yeah. Once they swap, especially it doesn't matter. Can just skip this. Could they do the uh, brains versus brawn and like really go like to the extreme? sort of like uh, you know an average Joe's uh, type season of sort of like okay super fans versus like uh, professional oh do we get to understand this huh? well they could but then how would that look right how would that feel it's like if you put 20 Cochran's versus like 10 Cochran's 10 Cochran's right that'd be a lot that'd be a big season well it could be Australian Survivor they do a lot more people right yeah yeah well, I think we could hear this thing yeah you could do that. It's definitely doable, but then it's like, well, how will the challenges look? Because anybody, I think it'd be interesting. It would be interesting. You know, I, I mean, I'd be down. I'd be down to see that happen. If there was a good mix, balance of challenges, where you know, not every single challenge has a yeah, well, physical port like component to it, then I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate yeah. it. If, if you're really and, making the challenges fair, right. then sure. Yeah, and not um, every single person is like a Cochrane, but people that are not necessarily like uh, like athletic uh, specimens, and then a tribe of people who are like um, you know not as uh, big super fans who are super athletic. I think that that might be like uh, you know an interesting season to watch, but. Uh, you know, let's talk about the season in front of us, uh, Survivor Girl. It was a season of breakout characters. Uh, of course, I mentioned four of them are going to come back for Survivor Game Changers. Debbie is such a breakout star in this season uh, that her star will fade uh, to some degree 
in Survivor Game Changers, but Jenny, mm-hmm. Debbie here is, um, you know, as, as promised here in uh, Survivor Corona. Yeah, um, I I love this season uh, because I am a big character person. Like I, th- th- and this season really oh, delivers it. with characters, and uh, Debbie pulls a lot of this weight. Like this is such a quotable season, and I think so. I mean, a lot of that is Aubrey, but like a lot of that is Sydney. There's so many people delivering, but like my God, Debbie had like. Quotes on quotes on quotes every so. single episode. The like, bomb doors are open. Prepare to fire. And they had so much fun with the Chiron, with all her different jobs. Like, yeah. where, you know, sometimes she was a waitress, well, sometimes she was a part time model. Safe. Like, I don't care. It, it, De- they, 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 the kill. Debbie like experience the 1.0 is close. incredible. Like, she, yeah. she delivers every episode she's in. Mm hmm. Yeah. Delivers food, probably, also. <laughs> From Red Lobster. <laughs> Occasionally. Um, yeah. yeah. No, she literally, you know, I feel like Let's she is jump. one of a couple in this season that really do stand out. And I don't recall seeing someone right, on so her until that point. And here, next episode, continue like, on. Like, well, and I don't think we've really seen anyone after her that has been.